You want the truth, the whole truth, the and Michigan nothing but the truth? You can't handle the truth! Well, we're giving you the Michigan Sports Truth, the show that detects, exposes, and reveals actual and hidden facts, truth, research, and statistics about all the Detroit and Michigan sports teams that the mainstream media doesn't want you to know, whether fans like it or not. No junk, no entertainment, no homerism, no coddling, no pop culture, no opinions, no shilling, and no fluff. Head over to our website at michigansportstruth.weebly.com, follow us on Twitter at Michigan underscore truth, and like our Facebook page, The Michigan Sports Truth. Also listen to us on Spreaker, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts via iTunes. The Michigan Sports Truth podcast does not represent or defame any of the teams it covers. It only detects, exposes, and reveals honest, actual, and hidden truth, facts, and statistics about them. And welcome to the post-game edition a jam-packed post-game edition for Friday, June 22nd, 2018. It is now midnight, June 23rd. Four minutes and change past midnight. But anyway, this is for June 22nd anyway. Because we have a ton to cover on what happened at that night. And it starts with the Tigers. That one is long gone! Boy, are they terrible. <laughs> you are pathetic! They get shellacked by the Cleveland Indians 10 nothing. I love it. Yeah, Chris Illich deserved that. But here's more analysis. Mike Fires was going up against Shane Bieber, who had a, a 176 whip. A 176 whip. And he didn't give up any runs. He only gave up four hits in seven innings pitch. Only one walk. The Tigers didn't even muster much, if any. They didn't muster any runs. They only mustered one hit and four walks against that guy. My God. (laughs) That is really embarrassing. And fans dare call them a playoff team with their, their stupid rally goose. Boy, that failed miserably. They didn't even muster a run in, 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 in any portion of an entire game. That absolutely sucks. Mike Fires, on the other hand, got shellacked. Four earned runs, four hits, five innings pitch, three walks, four Ks, a 429 ERA. Shane Bieber, a 245 ERA now. This is a large taste. This is actually a large taste of what's to come tomorrow and, or or later today and tomorrow early afternoon in Cleveland. It just shows how pathetic this Tigers franchise is. They're inept, they're they're inconsistent, they're arrogant, They keep bragging about their dumb rally goose and their players and Miguel Cabrera, who's already out for the rest of the season with a ruptured bicep tendon in his left arm. They they keep bragging about Victor Martinez, who doesn't produce much nowadays. Oh, boy. They got absolutely stomped. Stomped, baby. They did not face a Goli- they did not face a Goliath. They they faced Serpentera from the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. And they just got annihilated. So um, it's a six game margin in the American League Comedy Central Division. The Indians forty one and thirty three. The Tigers 36 and 40, only one game ahead of the Minnesota Twins for second place in that crappy division. Ten games back are the Tigers of those wild card spots, and three spots back, of course. Next game is Saturday at 6-10. Francisco Lariano, three two three and two, 
record, 390 ERA, 121 whip, versus Trevor Bauer, one of the Indians' aces, 6-5, and 250 ERA, a 109 whip. Trevor Bauer is going to at least slightly outpitch a washed-up veteran in Francisco Liriano. Liriano had better be careful with that dangerous Indians offense. So, that's all for the Tigers, but well, I have a lot of other news to cover, so let's get to the Red Wings. The Red Wings hired Dan Bilesma as an assistant coach, going in chronological order. He wants the power play unit to attack and converge. Now, Dan Bilesma means attention to detail, the other point is what that means to head coach Jeff Blaschel. And of course, we're, we're going to think that Jeff Blaschel is uh, on his way to termination. He might get fired. And Dan, and Dan Bilesman might soon take over as the head coach of the Red Wings. At least hopefully. But speaking of business, the Red Wings drafted two awesome players. Yeah. And they're not trading either of them anytime soon. Maybe not at all. Possibly. They they drafted forward Philippe Zadina, a right winger. Six overall in the pick in the draft. Six overall pick in the draft. And let me see here. He was um, from the Q QMJHL. His pro player co comparison is Arnami Panarin. And he he is a mega goal scorer. He just puts the puck puts pucks in the net. That's what I heard on NBCSN's coverage of the 2018 NHL draft. Hosted by Gary Bettman. Hosted by Liam McHugh, Darren Payne, and others. They also drafted center Joe Valino, who was, who was standing for a long time as the 14th best available. It depended on what, what all the other teams wanted. And they... And most teams wanted, most of the teams wanted a defenseman. For the Red Wings, the main top, the main thing of, of their side of the draft is they, they picked the best players available. The Arizona Coyotes left Philippe Zadina available for the Red Wings, and now. All the other teams after after that, through the Toronto Maple Leafs, who were who traded down with the St. Louis Blues for 29th, while St. Louis traded up for 25th, they both gave away. They both left Joe Valino out on the table for the Red Wings to pick up, and the Red Wings didn't waste any time. They picked him right up. They took. They grabbed the best players available. Ken Holland. Obviously, meant business. And unlike 2016, he did not trade anybody away because he didn't plan to. Like he said a couple months ago, or one month ago, rather, like he said to Greg Krupa of the Detroit News, we are about younger players. And Ken Holland proved it. Maybe the Red Wings are trying to rebuild and compete at the same time. They're also, what I heard recently a few hours ago, they plan to, to sign a free agent goaltender. There are four, and there were four options available, one of them being 
Kari Lintonen from the Dallas Stars. Which is interesting. Also, uh, Philippe Grubauer from the Washington, from the defending Stanley Cup champion Washington Capitals. A backup goaltender behind Braden Holtby. Philip Grubauer. They're looking for a backup goaltender behind Jimmy Howard. That's the that's their main purpose. So there you go. That's all the truth I have for the Red Wings. One team left to cover, and that's the Pistons. Left side line, free the answers. Two notes to keep in mind. The Pistons hired former Milwaukee Bucks assistant coach Sean Sweeney as an assistant coach. That was right after the Pistons trade up with the Philadelphia 76ers for shooting guard Kyrie Thomas from Crean at 38th overall and then drafted guard Bruce Brown Jr., probably a point guard, from Miami, Florida at 42nd overall. Of course, they're not all A-graded players. In fact, the Pistons, as proven, should have tanked a lot farther for a top for a top 10 or top 5 draft pick. There were a lot of top centers being drafted. One of them being... Uh, one of those centers being drafted by the number one... by the team that was... Uh, projected to select the number one overall 2018 draft pick, the Phoenix Suns. Imagine what the Pistons could have drafted. A backup center. A true backup center. That could that could outplay Eric Moreland individually. That way they don't need they don't even need Boban Marjanovic. Think about that. All those drafted centers, the Pistons missed out on because they didn't tank at all. Thanks to think, thanks to that fat little slob Stan Van Gundy, who still hates Donald Trump. I commend him for that. But basketball business is basketball business, and Stan Van Gundy never developed his players. He took a an unnecessarily risk unnecessary risk trading Boban, Tobias Harris, and Avery Bradley to the and two draft picks to the Clippers for for Blake Griffin, two reserve scrubs and at least one or two draft picks, other draft one or two other draft picks. And the Pistons flat out missed out on the playoffs and they were stuck at ninth place in the Eastern Conference the rest of the season. Karma is a bitch. Period. That's why Stan Van Gundy was fired. You're fired! And Dwayne Casey came along. Ed Stefanski came along as a senior advisor to the front office. And he, and he became the GM. Team president, he'll probably he'll probably become that too. There's nobody else stepping up. Ed Stefanski is going to be the team president and GM, I assume. Dwayne Casey's the head coach. Sean Sweeney is an assi- as an assistant coach. And the Pistons have their draft picks which are okay could have been a, still could have been a lot better but i guess we'll take those buck gino and ed smith had their uh, analysis on those two draft picks Kyrie thomas and bruce brown, bruce brown junior but that being said man I, i've almost run out of breath
It's now time for the National Sports Report with Louis Tenor. Take over. All right, now away we go. We'll start off, of course, with the uh, baseball scores, and they go like this. Rays uh, over the Yankees uh, uh, last night, or time rather, two to one. Yarbrough got the win. Sabathia got the loss, and Romo got the save. Some pitchers duel, huh? Yeah, who would have thought? Uh, this is not a pitcher's duel uh, right here. As the Braves and the Orioles are tied at seven, the top of the 13th with two out. Oh, wow. Uh, Orioles had them seven to four, but Braves got a three seven to three. The ninth. Tie it up. They were down seven to three. Now, it's, it, they were down seven to four at one small point, but they were down seven to three going into the bottom of the ninth. I saw it on MLB Network. Yeah, I, I uh, jumped a little bit late. Uh, Increment. Mm-hmm. Operators and Freeman are two up in the bottom of the 13. Okay. Going into the top of the ninth now, the Angels lead the Blue Jays. Two to one. Kendrick Diaz and Travis are due up. Can they hold it? We'll see. Bottom of the seventh right now, the Padres are leading the Giants. Three to two. Ariel, Grunenberg, and Delamis are due up. In game one of the Athletics and the White Sox, the Athletics pounded the White Sox 11-2. Benny got the win, and Shields got the loss. They have another game, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. Phil East pounded the Nationals 12-2. Evan got the win, and Rourke got the loss. The final in 13 of the D-backs uh, is the Pirates 2-1. to one. Chapin got the win. Glasnow got the loss. And McFarland got the save. It was, it was a scoreless pitcher's duel up until the, I think, the 11th inning. And then this is where we got. In anything but a pitcher's duel here, the Red Sox over the Mariners 14-10. Barnes got the win. And this is it. The Galeo got the loss. That is anything but a pitcher's duel. Uh, as we mentioned, Indians uh, just crushed the Tigers 10 to zip. Bieber got the win, and Byers got the loss. I hope it's no relation to Justin Bieber. <laughs> Reds doubled up on the Cubs 6 to 3. Castellillo got the win. Montella got the loss, and Iglesias got the save. Dodgers over the Mets 5 to 2. Wood got the win, Wheeler got the loss, and Jansen got the save. Mets won three in a row up at last, to last week, and now they've lost four straight since. Okay. Brewers after the Cardinals 2-1. to one. Kimbrough got the win, and Norris got the loss. Rangers over the Twins 8-1. to one. Minor got the win, Romeo got the loss, and Chavez got the save. Royals edged the Astros one to nothing. Grimm got the win. Giles got the loss, and Hill got the save. In Game Two, White Sox over the Athletics six to four. Columbia got the win. Bassett got the loss, and Soria got the save. And finally, Rockies over the Marlins eleven to three. Gray got the win. Chen got the loss. Those Marlins really know how to lose a game. You want to talk about a team that's pathetic? That is a team that's pathetic. Yeah. Yeah. So I like to call them the fish. All right. So, standings coming up. And despite the loss uh, tonight, the Yankees still have a slight, uh, slim lead over the Red Sox. One game. Red Sox are, I mean, Yankees are 50 and 23, and the Red Sox are 51 and 26. The Yankees leading percentage points 685 to 662. The rest is a seller to as the Rays are 35 and 40, 16 back. The Blue Jays 34 and 40, 16 and a half back. And the Orioles, a sorry statement at 21 and 52 and 29 games back. Good golly. 
In the Tragic Comedy Central Division, the Indians are 41-33. Six ahead of the Tigers at 36-40. Good. Twins are 33-39, seven back. The White Sox are 25-50, and 50, 16 and a half back. And the Royals, 23-52, and 52, 18 and a half back. Just awful. On to brighter news here, the Astros are... 15 and 27, have a three and a half game lead over the Mariners at 46 and 30. Angels, 40 and 35 at nine back. Kind of like on the border. Oakland is 39 and 37, 10 and a half back, not bad. And the Rangers bring up the rear at 33 and 44 at 17 back. Ah, well. Over to the National League scene, Braves are 43 and 30, have a three game lead over the Phillies at 40 and 33. Nationals not that far behind at 40 and 34, three and a half back. The Mets are a sinking ship as they're now 12 back at 31 and 42. Their 11 and 1 uh, streak to start the season is now long or gotten. And the Marlins, who never had a prayer to begin with this season, are 29 and 47 at 15 and a half back and are still crashing. Brewers lead the Central at 45 and 30, two games ahead of the Cubs at 42 and 31. I like that. Cardinals, 38 and 36, six and a half back. Pirates, 36 and 39, nine back. Man, the boss is going to kill me. And the Reds are 30 and 45 at 15 back. In the West, barely close here. The D backs are 42 and 31, uh, 33, excuse me. Two and a half ahead of the Dodgers at 39 and 35. Uh, the Rockies and Giants are each 38 and 38 at four and a half back. And the Padres are 34 and 43 at nine back. All right, that's, that's uh, rather doable. It's not an insurmountable um, lead at all. And even though nine back, it's still rather respectable. All right, so now we'll check for the games of uh, later today, or if you're still on the West Coast, tomorrow. <laughs> All right. And we lead like this. The Athletics will take on the White Sox at 210, as well as the Rangers and the Twins. At 310, the Marlins will take on the Rockies. Four or five games are the Phillies versus the Nationals. The D-backs taking on the Pirates. And the Padres taking on the Giants. 4-10 games, but we got a slew of them here. Cardinals face the Brewers. Orioles take on the Braves. Cubs take on the Reds. And the Yankees take on the Rays. 6-10, your Tigers take on the Indians. 7-15 games are all on Fox, and they go like this. The Mariners take on the Red Sox. The Royals take on the Astros. The Dodgers take on the Mets. I mean, Mets. <laughs> all at 17 on Fox. And in the nightcap, the Blue Jays take on the Angels at 9.07. I never understood why they always start at 7 after. If you ask me, that's kind of weird. All right, so uh, now we'll go over to... Uh, World Cup soccer action, and it leads like this. We had three games on tap as of yesterday, and they run down like this. All right, leading off, Brazil over Costa Rica, two to nothing. Nigeria over Iceland, Nigeria over Iceland, two to nothing, and the Swiss, meaning Switzerland, to beat to Siberia, two to one. Tomorrow's games bright and early again, folks, so get ready for this. And all three games tomorrow are on Fox, starting with Belgium and Tunisia at 8 a.m. By the way, that's East Coast time. Followed by South Korea and Mexico at 11 a.m. And Germany hopes to rebound from their loss against Mexico at 2 against Sweden. So we'll take a look at that. On the American side, we have a bunch of MLS games tomorrow, 
and they go like this. The Philadelphia Union take on Vancouver Whitecaps at five. My Red Bulls take on Dallas at six. Orlando versus Montreal at 7.30. Kansas City takes on the Houston Dynamo at 8.30. Colorado Rapids take on Minnesota United at 9. Salt Lake versus, we have two games at 10 o'clock. Salt Lake versus San Jose at 10 o'clock, as well as the Seattle Sounders take on the Chicago Fire. And Los Angeles Football Club takes on the Columbus Crew, which is a Molly Crew in itself, at 10.30. So that takes care of your soccer, uh, your soccer fixes for tomorrow. Now on to uh, WNBA. Yes, I covered that too, folks. And we had we had quite an eye in the uh, WNBA as well. Leading off, the Aces over the Liberty, 88-78. Uh, the Lynx over the Mercury, 83-72. The Atlanta Dream over the Connecticut Sun, 75-70. By the way, that's the Minnesota Lynx and the Phoenix Mercury in that last game. The Dallas Wings just just annihilated the LA Sparks. And this is not this for the score. 101-72. to That's not like the Sparks at all. Uh, the Washington Mystics over the Chicago Sky, 93-77. And the Seattle Storm over the Indiana Fever, 72-63. And no, Seattle Storm is not the name of a racehorse, thank you very much. Okay, and there is no action in the WNBA tomorrow. How rare for a Saturday. Okay. So now we get to some uh, news items of the day. And it starts like this. Uh, Leading off with some interesting news here from baseball. As Blue Jays closer Roberto Roberto Uzna was suspended without pay for 75 games on Friday for violating the Major League Baseball's domestic violence policy, the league had announced. Uh, he was arrested by the Toronto police and charged with assaulting a woman last month, May 8th to be exact, then was placed on administrative leave, and the league has been investigating the charges since. Uh, Usna is not expected to appeal the suspension, which is retroactive to May 8th, and extends all the way through August 4th. He will wind up missing a total of 89 days, which would cost him $2.5 million of his $5.3 million salary, so roughly half. In a statement by the Blue Jays, they say they supported uh, Major League Baseball's decision to suspend him that would have and we have no further comment citing the legal issues of the matter at hand. Uh, I don't have much of a reaction other than we take what MLB does and trust that you live live with that and let it go through its course. That's said by Blue Jays manager John Gibbons. Uh, before a Friday night's road game against the Los Angeles Angels, we knew something was coming down. Actually, it took a while. Hopefully, it will get all worked out on both sides, and everyone gets the help they need, and everything else will work out fine. Well, let's hope so. You hate to see someone's uh, you know season go the bluey over something like that. All right, uh, moving on to other news items here. The um, Dallas Stars have signed. Defenseman Stephen Johns to a $7 million three-year contract extension. Johns has had a career best of 15 points, 8 goals, and 7 assists in 75 games last season, his third in Dallas. He was the prospect acquiring a deal that brought Patrick Sharp to the Blackhawks in 2015. The deal... For Johns was announced on Friday, an hour before the start of the NHL draft, which is being held in Dallas this weekend. Along with John Klingenberg, Johns is part of a young core of defensemen. The Stars can hope to get the franchise back to the playoffs after a late-season collapse this past season. 
Yeah, that was uh, kind of disappointing. Far Cry from 2000, isn't it, folks? All right, uh, moving right along to more stuff here. And it goes like this. Oh. Oh, I also have some um, NHL awards to uh, mention, as that was passed on Wednesday. And some of the highlights are like this. Taylor Hall of the Devils wins the Hart Trophy as most valuable player. The Ted Lindsay Award for Best Player voted by the NHL Players Association was Connor McDavid of the Edmonton Oilers. Why am I not surprised? Uh, Best Defenseman, which is the, represents the Norris Trophy, goes to Victor Edmund of the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Venter Trophy goes to Pekka Ryan. That's goaltender. The Calder Memorial Trophy goes to, uh, that's the Rookie of the Year, goes to Matthew Barzell of, do I have to say the team, the Islanders. Yes. I got more news coming about them in a few minutes. Yuck. Uh, the Salik Trophy, which is the best defense, defense forward, goes to Ani Copulator of the LA Kings. Hmm, the Kings. Lady Bing Trophy for the most gentleman like player goes to William Carlson. Devils get another award as the uh, Mas- uh, Masterson Trophy goes to Brian Boyle for his dedication to the game. Jack Adams Coach of the Year goes to Gerard Gallant. I'm not surprised. At all. GM of the year goes to George McPee. Again, not not another big surprise at all. The uh, Community Hero Award goes to Darcy Hoogan. And the King Clancy Memorial Trophy goes to the Sydney Brothers, Daniel and Henrik. Nice way to close out your career. I think that covers all the uh, all the oh the Mark Messier Leadership Award goes to Derek England Maurice Richard Trophy top goal scorer oh gee I wonder that could be uh, could it be some guy named Alex Ovechkin yes and the William Jennings Trophy Award for fewest goals scored against went by LA Kings goaltender Jonathan Quick so he still got it somewhat. The Kings didn't go very far in the playoffs this year. Actually, they made it at all. All right, so now uh, let's get to the let's get to the, let's get to the um, draft here. The NHL draft. The NHL draft. All right. And it goes like this. The Buffalo Sabres got the top pick with Ramos Delane. It's a pretty good list here, folks. The can it, the Hurricanes go with Andre Sekulov, a right winger from the Ontario Hockey League. The Canadians go with Desperi Contouring. Con- He's from Finland. Ottawa Centers go with Brady Kachuk from Boston University. Gee, that name sounds so familiar. Uh, could it be honest by Keith Kachuk? I would think so. Mm-hmm. Coyotes go with Barrett, Barrett Beaton from the Ontario Hockey League. Detroit Wing Wings go with Flip Zandra, a right winger from Halifax. Sedina, yeah. Vancouver takes Quinn, Quinn Hughes. Uh, a defensive player from Michigan. Uh, Blackhawks take Adam Boyquist. They can use some help. Raiders take Vidal Kostrop, a right winger from Russia. Oh Edmonton Oilers take Evan 
Richard from the Ontario Hockey League. Islanders get, I believe, two back to um, yes, two back to back. Oliver Wallstrom and Noah Dobson back to back. Dallas Stars take Ty Delandria from the Ontario Hockey League. Philadelphia Flyers take Joel Babri. Fifteen. Uh, okay, Florida, Rush, Florida Panthers take Georgi Diskolino from Russia. Avalanche take Martin Kaut from the Czech from Czechoslovakia. Devils take Ty Smith from Spokane of the Western Hockey League. The Columbus Blue Jackets take Liam Bundy of um, London uh, of the Ontario Hockey League. Philadelphia Flyers take Jay O'Brien from uh, Thayer Academy High School. Ugh, a prodigy. Okay. Kings take Ramos Kupari from Finland. San Jose Sharks take Ryan uh, Mokery from the Ontario Hockey League as well. Boy, a lot from Ontario. Rangers take K. Andre Miller, a defensive from the U.S. Junior League. Ducks take Isaac Lundstorm from Sweden. Minnesota so well, take Flip Johansson from Sweden. St. Louis Blues take Dominic Bach. Bach uh, from, from Sweden, a right winger. Centers, Jacob Bernard Docker. That's, 20, that's uh, 26 so far in the league. Wow. <laughs> and of course, that was only the first round. The second and through South Browns will take place over the next couple of days. Trust me, folks, this thing is far from over. Okay, uh, NBA who had their draft last night, and I wasn't really surprised by a lot of the picks at all, to be honest with you. So we run it down, and they go like this. Phoenix selected DeAndre Eaton. Sacramento Kings selected Marvin Bigley III. Atlanta Hawks uh, selected Luca uh, Darnick, but he has been traded to the Dallas Mavericks. Grizzlies selected Jaron Jackson Jr. Dallas Mavericks selected uh, Trey Young, but he is being traded to the Atlanta Hawks. Orlando Magic selected Mohamed Fala. The Bulls selected. Wendell Clark Jr., number seven. Number eight, Cleveland selected Colin Sexton. Number nine, the Knicks selected Kevin Knox, uh, much to the dismay of the crowd. Oh boy. Number ten, uh, Sixers selected Mikel Bridges, but he was traded to the Phoenix Suns. Number eleven, the Hornets selected Shy. Alexander, but he's being traded to the L.A. Clippers. The L.A. Clippers selected Miles Bridges, and he's being traded to the Charlotte Hornets. Michigan State. The L.A. Clippers selected Jerome Robinson. Number 14, the Nuggets selected Michael Porter Jr. No surprise there at all. Number 15, the Wizards selected Troy Brown. Number 16, the Coyotes selected Jair, Zaire Smith, but he's being traded to the 76ers. The, the Bucks selected Dante DeVizcano. 18, the Spurs selected Lonnie Walker the fourth. Number 19, the Hawks selected Kevin Number 20, the Wolves selected 
Josh Okachin. Number 21, the Jazz, like a troublemaker himself, Grayson Allen, of course. Yeah. 22nd, the Bulls, like a Chandler Hutchinson. Number 23, the Pacers, like an Aaron Holiday. Number 24, the Blazers select Anthony Simmons. Number 25, the Lakers selected Ortiz Wagner. Number 26, the Sixers selected Landry Shamit. Number 27, the Celtics selected Robert Williams. 28, the Warriors selected Jacob Evans. Number 29, the Nets selected Denzia Musa. Are they in trouble? Number 30, the Bucks select Omari Spellman. That's the first round. And, um, yeah, I wonder that the, that the NBA one is always shorter, though, than the NHL and the NFL. Hmm. How interesting. They get all done in one night. 31, uh, the Suns select Ely Okubu. Number 32, the Grizzlies select Jerome Javon Carter. Number 33, the Mavericks select Jalen Brewson. Number 34, the Hawks select Devontae Graham, but he's being traded to the Charlotte Hornets. Number 35, the Mavericks select Melvin Frazier. Number 36, the Knicks select Mitchell Robinson. Number 37, the Kings select Gary Trent Jr., but he's being traded to the Portland Trailblazers. Sixers, number 38, select Tyree. Ari, Tyree Thomas, but he's being traded to, guess who? The Pistons. The Pistons. Well, how about that? Yep. Yeah. Sixers uh, also select Isaac Bonga, number 39. Number 40, the Nets again. Uh, select Rodnes Curtis from Barcelona, Spain. Hey. 41, the Magic select Jared Vanderbilt, but he is being traded to the Denver Nuggets. Number 42, you are pissed and select Bruce Brown. Junior, from Miami, Florida. Right. Probably a point guard, like I pointed out before. Mm-hmm. Uh, no. Yeah. Although I think it said shooting guard, but that could be a mistake. Number 43. The all, Nuggets, I s- like, all it said was a guard. Okay, but it, it, it does list as shooting guard on here. Okay, it's shooting guard then. Never mind. Okay. Denver selects Justin Jackson, but he's going to the Orlando Magic. Number 44, the Wizards select Israel Sanon. Number 45, the Nets select Amadou Diallo. Number 46, the Rockets select D. Anthony Melton. Number 47, the Lakers select Slazov. Uh, Manicook, 48, the Wolves select Kila Dia. Number 49, the Spurs select Shinzume Metu. Number 50, the Pacers select Elise Johnson. Number 51, the Pelicans select Tony Carr. That's Carr with two R's. Number 52, the Jazz select Vincent Edwards, but he's being traded to the Houston Rockets. Number 53, the Thunder select Devin Hall. Number 54, the Mavericks select Shake Milton, but he's being traded to the Philadelphia 76ers. Number 55, Charlotte uh, selects Arnos. Number 
156, the Sixers select Ray Spalding, but he's being traded to the Dallas Mavericks. Number 57, the Thunder select Kevin Kirby. Number 58, the Nuggets select Thomas Welsh. Number 59, the Suns select George King. And number 60, the Sixers select the brother of the Greek freak, who is being traded to the Dallas Mavericks. Huh. Which is some kind of brother thing here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Interesting to know. Both brothers are not going to be, uh, are going to be together. All right. So now on to uh, other news items of the day. As we scroll down the line here. Mm-hmm. All right. Washington Capitals have traded their defenseman Brooks, Orpic, and goaltender, uh, Phil, Bergerbauer to the Avalanche for a second round draft pick and 47th overall in the 2018 draft, which was being held earlier tonight. It's going to be a, that's going to be kind of tough uh, to repeat next year. You know, losing your top players. All right, continuing on. Uh, Dallas Mavericks were considering only the number three. Uh, graphic Luca Donick out of the Las Vegas Summer League. Now, according to ESPN, as the franchise is prioritizing um, rest for their star rookie player on the heels of the 19 year old's long season with Real Madrid, the Mavericks acquired uh, Donick by moving up two spots in a draft night trade uh, with the Atlanta Hawks. He led Real Madrid to uh, the Euro League and ACB titles, which was uh, held in Spain. So, I guess you feel like he's a little bit exhausted. But I think, you know, you should just do just, do, um, you know, more experience, to get some experience. Uh, and again, uh, what do I know? Oh, uh, the NHL has announced its uh, little schedule, and I'm going to go to that, actually. Uh, right now to explain uh, how this is how this is because I have um, some interesting news of who's going to start when and as well as against who concerning our local our local teams and the season does start on October 3rd with four games Montreal takes on Toronto that's the Habs and the Leafs. The Bruins will take on the Capitals at 7.30 that night. And Washington will raise the banner. Calgary will take on Vancouver at 10. And the Ducks will take on the Sharks at 10.30. And incidentally, the Capitals are going to play that night, October 4th, as Pittsburgh opens up their home schedule. Good grief. Um... Nashville will open up with the Rangers on October 4th at 7 o'clock. The Islanders will also up that night against the Carolina Hurricanes. And your Red Wings will open up at home against the Columbus Blue Jackets at 7.30 at night on October 4th. And for you Devils fans out there, and you know who you are, they will open up with an afternoon game. Uh, Edmonton versus New Jersey at 1 o'clock on that day, but I think that's played outside the U.S. as part of the Global Series. So it's played at 1 o'clock here in this part of the world, but I think that's uh, like about 7 or 8 o'clock where they're playing that night. So it's not, it is treated as a home game, but it's a home away from home game if you all catch my drift. Okay, Hawks uh, GM Travis Schnellick found out whom other teams were planning on drafting. And they said he would be able to select uh, Hunter with the 19th overall selection. And there was no need to trade up to get the Maryland guard. Uh, he told 95.7 in the game in San Francisco yesterday that there was a deal in place to acquire the 17th pick from the Bucks in exchange for a draft pick. 
but he never had the had to make the deal because the media was projecting picks on Twitter. Twitter. Oh well. What can I say? I don't trust him. Celtics first of operations, Danny Ainge unknowingly uh, tipped the team's first round selection. That's uh, Robert Williams of Texas A&M. Point guard Terry Rozier spoke to him on a webcast. Rozier appeared on Bleacher's Report's online draft program. When he was asked to predict the Celtics pick at number 27, instead, uh, Rozier FaceTime Ainge, who entered the Celtics training uh, facility, and spilled his guts out, revealing the upcoming pick. I had that part. Ainge said, I had to draft a point guard. Uh, joke. Ainge, or Rozier, was first asked about the team's selection. First for the actual fit, Ainge answered, it's going to be Williams. But we were just looking at the medical stuff. <laughs> oh, boy. He never asked the humor anyway. Spurs uh, general manager R.C. Buford on uh, Thursday said that the franchise's desire to keep Kwani Leonard uh, in the fold, but we will explore all other options. Among the issues were his frustration on how the team handled his quad injury and kept him out of action for much of the season, just nine games. Leonard was traded to L.A., likely more with the Lakers, according to ESPN, but Buford expressed the team's willingness to work with Leonard to bridge the gap and bring the issue to its conclusion. Yeah, we hope. All right. Continuing on down the line here. From yesterday. Dwight Howard and the Nets agreed to enter uh, bio talks for his $23.8 million expiring contract. Both sides agreed to work on securing the buyout, that according to sources. Howard would then enter free agency this summer. At 6'11", he would be one of the top three big men, and I use that, uh, I use that efficiently, on the market. Yesterday, the Hornets and the Nets agreed to a trade that will send Howard to the Nets in exchange for Timothy Muscov for two second round draft selections, and of course, cash considerations. But is he going to help the Nets, uh, you know, make a contendable, uh, you know, a playoff team? No. Forget it. The NFL plans to suspend Bucks quarterback Jameis Winston for the first three games of the 2018 season for violating the league's personal conduct policy per league source. The plan suspension stems from an alleged incident with an Uber driver in Scottsdale, Arizona in March of 2016. The league has not notified Winston of the decision as of yet as circumstances surrounding it. It could still lead to an increase or decrease of the three games per source. One source indicated that Winston could be notified as of yesterday, but another source said the decision could come next week. Or sources her sources say an appeal could be discussed, but have largely been, but they've largely been a failure in the past, most recently with Ezekiel Elliott of the Dallas Cowboys, who was suspended six games last August. So why go through that again? Yeah, because that's, uh, okay, big story of the day here. Well, the week, I should say. The New York Islanders have named Barry Trotz the next head coach. President of Operations Lou Lamorel announced the move on June 21st at the draft, just two weeks after giving the Capitals their first Stanley Cup, and three days after he resigned for the position. Hmm. Trotz had reported he agreed to a five-year deal or double the amount he would have annually made on a shorter contract with the Capitals. He is the fifth coach not to return after winning the Cup. Well, now, I know you're thinking that the last one 
uh, was Scotty Bowman. No, but he retired in 2002. The last one to jump ship completely was Mike Keenan of the New York Rangers back in 1994. We don't count retirements. That's not jumping ship. No, nope. uh, Scotty Bowman retired on a happy occasion. Yes. That's what he wanted to do, and he did it. He well, passed his mentor, Bl- Toe work. Blake. Oh, yeah. Another old time. Nine Stanley Cups to eight. I remember it very well. And I got yeah. and I got the poster of the Detroit Red Wings 2002 Stanley Cup champions with Dominic Koscik, Luke Robitaille, and Brett Hall. I remember that. Along with Steve Eisenman, Brendan Shanahan, uh, Sergei Fedorov, Nicholas Lidstrom, and Nicholas Lidstrom, and Chris Chelios, Ooh. Darren McCarty, Chris Draper, Kurt Moppy, Matthew Danano, Boy Devereaux, Pavel Datsuk, etc. Steve Duchesne, mm. Frederick Olison. Wow. Backup goaltender Manny Legacy. Yeah, but those, those, all, all those guys, they did it yeah. as a team. They won the President's and, Trophy and they won the Stanley Cup, period. Yes. That's but what you're supposed that, to do. Yeah, exactly. But a few teams have, have come so far have done so little. <laughs> okay. Predators forward. Austin Watson has been charged with domestic violence, uh, confirmed by the Franklin, Tennessee Police Department on Thursday. Watson was arrested last Saturday in Franklin. He was set free on a $45 hour bond and is due in court June 28th. According to the affidavit by the Associated Press, a Franklin police officer flagged down a witness to a possible domestic violence situation at a gas station. The officer noticed the passenger of the car trying to get back, trying to back away from being shoved, from shoved away. The report said the passenger had said, stop, and was trying to cover her face. Watson told the police that he and his girlfriend were having an argument and admitted to pushing her. Officers say they found red marks on the woman's chest, and she said they were caused by Watson, the big jerk. League Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly is aware of the situation, and it will be dealt with next season. <sighs> Some boyfriend for you are. All right, uh, continuing on. Um, the NHL Awards uh, also had some somber moments as they honored the victims of three tragic events that uh, took that uh, shocked the hockey world this season. In October, just before the season began, the mass shooting on the Vegas Strip, uh, Kings Knights defenseman Derek England gave a speech uh, before the home opener and said that we are Vegas strong. Uh, number two, the Parkland shootings that killed 17 people back in February, including 10 team members, uh, 17 people in February, and the Hornbolt bus uh, tragedy in Western Canada that killed 16 people, including 10 members of the team back in April. Each tragedy received a one-minute video tribute and were honored on stage. Just really shocking what's happened this year in the, in the hockey world. So this is, you know. All right. Um, the Cavaliers are not exactly shopping for all star for Kevin Love. Uh, that was heading into last night's draft. Multiple sources told ESPN on Wednesday. Furthermore, regardless of LeBron's decision, the Cavaliers have interest in keeping Love next season. Love played in 59 games this season, missing a portion due to a hand injury. Heading to the playoffs, Love, who was offered a trade to the Pacers and a trade for Paul George last June, says it could be his last go around with the team. That's trade its number one draft pick, Andrew Wiggins, to the Wolves in 2014, ushering the most successful era in the Cavaliers franchise history. The Cavaliers held the eighth spot in the draft without knowing James' intention for next season. Sources tell ESPN, James must decide by next Friday on if he will decide to opt out of his, the final year of his contract. 
Meanwhile, the Cavaliers have inquired about the possibility of Spurs forward Kawani Leonard, but the franchise does not believe it has the realistic assets to convince the Spurs to deal the former Bowers MVP, considering what other teams uh, the market can offer. Uh, yeah, because Leonard's been, you know, frustrated too. All right. Uh, Memphis Grizzlies were involved in a number of discussions with the number of teams who traded the number four draft pick in last night's draft. Sources told ESPN any trade would likely have to include Chandler Parsons, whose contract is considered an albatross due to his knee problems. Mm. The Grizzlies have several different trade partners, such as the, listen to this list, folks, the Mavericks, the Magic, the Knicks, the Bulls, the Nuggets, the Celtics, and the Clippers have shown varying degrees of interest in a deal such as told his game. What a list. Uh, okay, um, to uh, also add to the NHL awards that were handed out, Taylor Hall won the Hart Trophy with 72 first place votes um, out of 164 to win the MVP over uh, Nathan McKinnon by less than 100 votes. So I just thought I'd put that in there. And Mexico was fined $10,000 by FIFA for chanting insults during Sunday's match versus Germany. I mean, you're supposed to show some class in a World Cup event, and that is not the proper way to do that. Even even a World Cup match, they uh, they can't they can't show some class. Yeah, I get it. you beat the number one team, but you don't go with those uh, anti slurs. All right, so now we'll just check on the late night baseball scores. There's only a small handful of games left, and it reads like this. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so. Finishing up, in the top of the, oh my goodness, top of the 15th, but we have a change in the scoring here as the Orioles now lead the Braves 10-7, to runners on first and second and two out. Uh, White Land is pitching and Davis is at bat. In the bottom of the ninth, the Padres are now leading the Giants. Six to two, mm. two out. Hand is pitching in. Williamson is batting. Every dog has his day. Make no bones about that one. Oh, and I believe that is it. Let's see. Yes, uh, one more score here. The Angels hold off the Blue Jays two to one. Hand lead the save. Estrada got the loss. Haley got the win, a strike of those, and Parker got the save. All right, that concludes my notes for the evening. I'll turn back over to you. All right, that's going to do it for the post game edition for episode for uh, the post game edition for Friday, June twenty second, two thousand eighteen. Jam packed episode. Uh, the Red Wings and Blue Jackets opening up in the regular season. Yeah, that, that, that should be a good Northeast Division battle in my NHL conference realignment concept with Seattle be, being inserted. That 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 would be a good matchup. That said, before we sign off, we want to remind everyone to share this episode and our entire podcast on social media and have their friends share that as well because we want to tell them that the Michigan Sports Truth Podcast is searching for a wider audience that is fans of sports, especially our teams in the state of Michigan, including the Tigers, Pistons, and Red Wings. So please spread the word about the Michigan Sports Truth Podcast on Spreaker, SoundCloud, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts via iTunes, its Facebook page, and its Twitter handle at Michigan underscore Truth. For Lewis Tenor, I'm Taylor Phillips. Follow me on Twitter at dt 2 Phillips. Personally, thanks very much for listening, downloading, and sharing. We'll talk to you tomorrow night at 11. TTFN, ta ta for now. The Michigan Sports Truth Podcast does not represent or defame any of the teams it covers. It only detects, exposes, and reveals honest, actual, and hidden truth, facts, and statistics about them.
ಶಾಂತಮ್ಮ ಪ್ರೀ